The US stock market has gone insane. It's up massively. It's down incredibly. It's defying gravity and sanity. Traders bought the dip in order to go all in on their ideology of the never ending bull market. They forgot to read into why the stock market has risen and it has nothing to do with their seven shares of Amazon. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's happening in the markets and then we're going to discuss discuss so many different economic indicators that I think are important. So let's begin by taking a look at the markets right now. As I record this video in the middle of the day on Friday's trading session, you can see that the US markets are in the green. They are in positive territory now after doing well over the past couple of trading sessions as we have seen the plunge protection team, the computer algorithms, and the $64 billion secret the media will not discuss. So let's look further into crude oil, just showing you as I record this, we are over $45 a barrel on the WTI. Bloomberg has done interviews with several different fund managers and analysts. What investment advisors are saying on the Dow's 871 point bounce? Wall Street mouths were again agape at the sight of frantic moves in equities. The S&P 500 climbed 3.8% from its lows, turning on a dime at about 2.20 p.m. while the Dow Jones swung 871 points straight up. That is not natural, that is not normal behavior, and that isn't buying the dip. So we'll look at the chart right now just to show you the reversal in trend that occurred. So in the morning, markets were down, it looked terrible, and then suddenly the market rocketed higher. And I talked about this already, but what I think is interesting is that you have a lot of these different investors, whether they're professional or just individuals, and they have this idea that they bought into the dip and everybody bought the dip, that's why the market rocketed higher. That couldn't be further from the truth, Although that might have been their case, they might have done that, but it had no impact on the markets. See, they didn't all together, everyone in the world who bought, they didn't all decide to purchase at 2.20 p.m. See, that's not the way it works. Of course, they did so on their own time. It was the $64 billion secret, the plunge protection team who usually exclusively works in the afternoon, and the computer algorithms that traded on this newfound information as soon as they see the market rising they could start to buy into that trend but it's not actual individuals understanding what's happening in the market forces that are taking hold matt thompson's twitter had this post i think it's really interesting this is the s p 500 plus five percent or greater days since the year 2000 big picture bulls don't want you to see and if you look at this here you're gonna notice something very interesting so we saw that happening just now and we also see this in a bear market. You're looking at it right here, but doesn't necessarily dictate where in the beginning of the bear market or the end of the bear market. It just shows you that this typically happens during those times, not in the bull market. So where we are today, I can't tell you that. We only know it in the pages of history, but I wanted to present this to you because I think it is very telling and there's no way to deny the information. Here it is. I'm not suggesting what's gonna happen tomorrow and beyond. I'm telling you what's happening in the previous cycles and how that could affect you. So let's move on to this next one. Real household net worth. You can see the disparity that has been presented to us from the GDP, that's the red line, and the blue line is the households and nonprofit organizations net worth. Clearly, this is the everything bubble. It has gone crazy. And more recently, we've seen these assets being pulled down, whether that is real estate, whether that is stocks. And this has come to a closer connection, but it does not do it justice. It needs to come down a lot further or the GDP needs to rise at a rate it never has in history ever before and do so for a long period of time. So we'll see what happens with that. But I think it's important to see the financialization of assets that has occurred and it has been a big problem overall. You cannot get away with this madness and yet here they are trying to do so year after year. 
economic prosperity has never been so poor. So despite the fact that we have all of this madness being created in the markets, we still have a big problem. Five year average productivity, that's the red line. We have the average wage growth, that's the blue line, and the average real GDP growth. And that tells us something that the media simply will not cover and that over the years it has been weaker and weaker and weaker. Real strength is there right that's just the way it is we've been dealing with this for many decades and it's all because of the central banks they are diminishing productivity by destroying the value of the currency they do this concertedly actively and they want us to be able to not, never save money that's the whole purpose of it all they want to ensure that individuals are punished on a daily basis so that they're forced to put their money into these completely insane markets. You're looking at JCPenney. Periodically, it fell below the $1 mark, making JCPenney a penny stock. If you can believe that or not, it's unbelievable. This is just one more retailer that has failed. You're looking at all of these big box type retailers, and they are simply going out of business. They are filing for bankruptcy, whether that's Sears or Toys R Us or any other big retailer. They are all at the end of their lives. It not only impacts the shareholders but of course there are so many people working for these businesses that are going to lose out so you have to be paying close attention to what the new trends are at all times this is just something that I worry about not just as I said for the shareholders and other individuals that are impacted by the stock price but also those individuals who are working in the mall outside of the JC Penny store if that store closes down and suddenly their employment is going to suffer as a result because the big box stores generally bring a lot of employment around them as well. So these staple or anchor stores are very important to the different malls and places where they are. Suddenly they move out, you have a big issue. So you've heard it many times in the media that the 3.7 unemployment rate is the best that the U.S. has had in decades. It's incredible. We're at full employment right now. Congratulations to the BLS for reporting such a stupid statistic. Now, how do I get away with saying that this is a stupid statistic? Well, quite frankly, all of these numbers on here are fictional. We're going back into 2008 and not a single one of these numbers represents reality. Why? Well, I did an entire video about that. If you do a search on this website, you will just type in unemployment, the money GPS, all one word, and you can click on that first video. Of course, I've done many videos, but this is my most recent one. The US unemployment rate is completely fake. Here's why. I purposely made this video so that I can reference it over and over and over. So take a look at it. Definitely, I break down exactly why it is fictional and why we should be more concerned about the fact that unemployment is significantly higher. And in the end, we have one issue that remains. With all of this unemployment, a new cycle will eventually occur in which employment goes up. That's going to be potentially several years away. But in that time frame, what we have to worry about is robots and automation replacing workers for many different industries. In this example, out of Reuters, Kroger starts use of unmanned vehicles for delivery in Arizona. This is an issue for a lot of individuals simply because they are doing delivery services. They're working at jobs that easily could be replaced. So in the next cycle where companies, after they lay people off, they start to see that the economy is rising again, they can hire people back. But will they decide to instead hire a company that could replace those individuals and in a longer term scenario, they wouldn't have to worry about the overhead, the healthcare, and all of the downsides of this human workforce. That's what I worry about, not necessarily for today, but in the next cycle. That's what I wanted to present to you today. And I wanted to make it very clear about the issues that are happening right now. See, I did a video a few days ago about the $64 billion secret as to why the markets have declined. And I know that about 50,000 people at the time of this recording have seen it. So it's important. It's an important video. A lot of people did see it. But I just wanted to make sure that people understood what it was all about. Pension funds had to 
sell off their fixed income investments and buy into equities. In doing so, they only had a few trading days to do it until the end of the year, and it caused a massive shift that then affected the algorithms which bought on that information and the retail investors, the seven shares of Amazon investors, and like little minnows chasing the big fish, they then were riding the waves. So this is what occurred here, and a lot of people don't understand that. The media is not covering it at all, and with obvious reasons, they want to ensure that the market stays calm. Now, I've said it many times before, and I'll say it again. If the Federal Reserve reverses course, reduces interest rates, and increases the amount of money that they print, the stock market can go higher. If the ECB decides that instead of stopping the money printing that they're doing at the end of this month and 2019, they decide to print a whole bunch of money and start it up again, stock market can go up. But as long as quantitative tightening is going on, there's no possible way that the markets can go up simply impossible. So I'll end it there. If you found this informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. I talk about every basic detail all the way back from the foundation in the history. And then I get into everything from the asset classes, making money, everything you need to know is covered in two books. This is the information that was robbed from you throughout your education. So I had to write them and I hope that you will enjoy as so many other people have told me throughout the years how they really, really enjoyed the book. So check them out, link is in the description. If you're more interested in the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.